When it comes to building your own ideal credit card setup, there are so many credit cards to choose from and there are so many paths to take, whether you're focusing on cash back, travel, or a little mix of both. And of course, along this journey, we're going to choose the credit cards that gets us the most amount of value, provides the most luxury benefits while keeping annual fees as low as possible. But what if you had to make a credit card setup only with credit cards that you don't already have? This is something that Daniel Braun did in one of his recent videos where he created a six card setup made up of cards that he didn't already have, and he challenged other credit card content creators to do the same. Well, Daniel, I accept your challenge and I created this five card setup with cards that I don't already have that I'm going to name my preferred credit card setup, and you're gonna see why. Now, before we get into the setup itself, I want to first touch on a few points because it's important to start with the end in mind, especially when it comes to building out a new credit card setup. Since we're starting from scratch, the first point I wanna make is that you want to focus on building that core credit card setup, which is more focused on the multipliers since you'll depend on the setup to get consistent value on your everyday spending categories. And for me, those main categories are restaurants, groceries, travel and transit, and gas. Okay, so now that we've selected our target categories, the next step is to determine whether we want to be on team cashback or on team travel. And along with that, here are the criteria that are important to me. I value simplicity over complexity. I don't mind paying annual fees as long as the card gets me value. I'd like travel benefits, including lounge access, travel protections, and primary auto rental collision damage waiver. And I personally prefer hybrid credit card setups that get me both cashback and travel value. So with all that being said, let's start with the first credit card in the setup, which is the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. Didn't expect that one coming, huh? Let me explain. The Chase Freedom Unlimited card has a current sign-up bonus of earning 20,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points after spending $500 in the first three months. And that's a solid sign-up bonus, but on occasion you'll get something even better, for example, 5x cashback on groceries, gas, or even both for 12 months, so always keep an eye out for those limited time sign-up bonus offers. So I chose this card because it has two everyday categories that I need, 3x back on dining and 1.5x back on everything else, and it also has no annual fee. And I can already hear a lot of you coming after me, but Stan, why didn't you choose a 2% card like the City Double Cash, Wells Fargo Active Cash, or even the Fidelity Rewards Visa? Wouldn't those cards get you a better value? And you're right, on the surface they would get you a better value, but as I go through more of these cards in the setup, I'm going to explain why I chose the Freedom Unlimited instead. So with that question fresh in our minds, let's move on to our next credit card that will cover another important category, travel. Since I chose the Chase Freedom Unlimited as my first card, it would probably be good to choose another ultimate rewards earning card that not only gets me an elevated multiplier on travel, but also unlocks the ability to transfer my UR points to Chase's travel partners. And there are three cards that can accomplish this task. The Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and the Chase Inc. Preferred. Now, which one of these three cards do you think that I chose in my preferred credit card setup? If you guessed the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, you would be correct. The Chase Sapphire Preferred card has a standard sign-up bonus offer of earning 60,000 bonus points after spending $4,000 on purchases in the first three months after account opening. It gets you 5x points back on travel purchase to the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, 3x points back on dining, online grocery purchases, and streaming services, 2x points back on travel, and 1x points back on everything else for a $95 annual fee. The card also comes with a $50 statement credit each account anniversary year for hotel stays purchased through Chase Ultimate Rewards, travel and purchase protections, no foreign transaction fees, and primary auto rental collision damage waiver. So for me, this would be my go-to travel card, mainly due to the travel benefits and protections, especially that primary auto rental collision damage waiver, which is pretty amazing on a card with just a $95 annual fee. And I can't tell you how much money this one benefit has saved me from the insurance options offered from the rental car companies at the counter. And this benefit is a must-have for those of you, like myself, who rent cars often while traveling. Of course, this card falls a little bit flat when it comes to its multipliers, specifically the 2x points back on travel and 3x points back on online groceries. But since I highly value the primary auto rental collision damage waiver, I'm willing to sacrifice the general travel multiplier to get this benefit. Of course, the Chase Sapphire Reserve and Inc. Preferred cards have a 3x multiplier on travel and also have primary auto rental CDW, but the Sapphire Reserve comes in with an annual fee of $550, while the Inc. Preferred only offers this benefit for business rentals only. 
But what's nice about the travel category, specifically on the Chase Sapphire Preferred, is that it's very broad and covers the transit category as well. And if worst comes to worst, I can always use the Chase Travel Portal to get 5x points back instead of the standard 2x, so it's nice to have options. So now that we've covered travel, let's get back to that online grocery category. It's no secret that there are mixed reviews on how useful this category really is, but I think the general consensus is that this category should really be 3x on groceries itself, since that's the standard category that virtually all other credit cards use. And there are certainly workarounds, for example, using store apps to purchase groceries while shopping in store that ultimately code as online groceries, but in my opinion, we shouldn't have to go through these hoops to make this category work for us. So because of this groceries issue on the CSP, we now have to figure out which card we want to use to cover that grocery category, and the card I would pick for this is none other than the American Express Blue Cash Preferred Card. This card has a sign-up bonus of earning $250 of cash back after spending $3,000 in the first six months of card membership as well as an intro APR offer. And the main reason why I selected this card was because of its multipliers, mainly the 6% cash back on groceries for up to $6,000 per year at US supermarkets for no annual fee in the first year, then $95 thereafter. But I will say that this category ceiling is a little bit limiting, averaging only $500 per month for that 6% elevated multiplier on grocery spending. And since there will eventually be an annual fee, this does eat into the overall earnings of this card, yielding an effective 4.4 cash back in total when accounting for the cash back redemption rate if you're just looking at grocery spending. But another nice perk about this card is the $84 Disney bundle credit where you can get up to $7 every month in a statement credit if you have an eligible subscription to the Disney bundle, cutting that effective annual fee down to just $11. You also get 6% cash back on select streaming services, so that's just another reason to use this card if you happen to have a lot of streaming services in your household. And you also get 3% cash back on transit, 3% cash back on gas, and 1% cash back on all other purchases. And of course, having these extra categories is a nice bonus and gives me more options to choose from, but in my opinion, there's a better card that I could use specifically for that gas category. And it's going to come to no surprise to any of you what that card is, which is everyone's favorite 5% category card, the City Custom Cash Card. This card has a sign-up bonus offer of $200 cash back after spending $1,500 on purchases in the first six months of account opening, earning you 5x thank you points on your top eligible spend category each billing cycle, up to $500 for no annual fee. And since the 5% multiplier is on your top spending category, it's important to only use the City Custom Cash Card for that one category since any other purchase would get you only 1x thank you points, which is not great. This card will be great to cover that gas category at the 5x level, and I think this is one of the best cards out there as a main card for a specific category or to supplement another category you may be short on. For example, that grocery category on the Blue Cash Preferred, since that 6% grocery multiplier is limited to only $500 per month on average. Okay, so we've now covered four out of the five cards I'm going to use, and I'm sure now you can see why I decided to call it my preferred credit card setup. The cards we have so far are the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the American Express Blue Cash Preferred, the City Custom Cash, and the Chase Freedom Unlimited cards with a total annual fee of $190. But the effective annual fees could be $45 on the CSP due to that $50 hotel credit and $11 on the Blue Cash Preferred due to the $84 Disney Bundle credit, totaling only $56. And you can see that with these cards, we've covered the four main categories that we targeted at the beginning of this video, with 6% cash back on groceries, 5x thank you points back on gas, 3x UR points back on dining, 2x UR points back on travel, or 5x UR points using the Chase Travel Portal, and 1.5x your points back on everything else. The Chase Sapphire Preferred also gets me primary auto collision damage waiver, which is an absolute must in my credit card setup. But one thing I also want to comment on is why I went with the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Freedom Unlimited instead of pretty good alternative cards, which are the City Premier and the City Double Cash card. And in my opinion, it all comes down to comparing the City Premier card with the Chase Sapphire Preferred card and what both cards offer in the context of what I'm looking for. If we briefly look at the City Premier card, we can see that it gets you 3x thank you points at restaurants, supermarkets, gas stations, air travel, and hotels, as well as 1x points back on everything else for a $95 annual fee. 
and I will admit that the multiplier structure is much better compared to the Chase Sapphire Preferred. But where the CSP comes out on top is in the benefits side with travel protections as well as that primary auto rental collision damage waiver, both of which are not offered on the City Premier card. So since I chose the Chase Sapphire Preferred for the benefits over the City Premier card in my specific situation, it makes more sense for me to get the Chase Freedom Unlimited card to help boost my alternate rewards points earnings so I can potentially make a big transfer partner redemption in the future. And you could also redeem your points with a 25% boost when using Chase's travel portal with the CSP, so that's a nice option to consider as well. So with these benefits in mind, as well as other cashback redemption methods, in my opinion, Chase has the most flexible point system of all the major banks, so that's the main reason why I decided to focus on the Ultimate Rewards program for this particular setup. But there's one more thing in the setup that's missing, and that's luxury benefits, including lounge access, and the card I chose to complete this setup is the Hilton Honors Aspire card. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Stan, I thought you were a Marriott guy. Why are you choosing a Hilton card? Okay, you're right. I do typically stay at Marriott's, but since I virtually have all the Marriott cards that I need at this point, this card would be my next choice. And I do, on occasion, stay at Hilton Properties, not to mention that the Hilton Honors Aspire card is a beast of a card. This card comes with a sign-up bonus of 150,000 Hilton Honors points after spending $4,000 in purchases within the first three months and earns 14x points at Hilton Hotels, 7x points on airlines, car rentals and dining, and 3x points back on everything else. But I didn't get this card for the multipliers. The Hilton Honors Aspire card comes with complimentary Hilton Diamond status, a Priority Pass membership, and an annual, uncapped, free night award. And if the $450 annual fee sounds like too much, there's also a $250 Hilton Resort credit and a $250 Airline Incidental credit to consider that can help offset that annual fee. This card is one of the best, if not the best, luxury hotel credit card on the market today, and this is the card that I'd use to stay at luxury Hilton properties like the Waldorf Astoria and enjoy all the perks and benefits that come with Hilton Diamond status. Of course, that Priority Pass membership is also important so I can get access to those airport lounges and be able to relax in a nice quiet space while traveling. So there you have it, the five cards that make up my preferred credit card setup, consisting of four cards as my core setup and one card I'm using primarily for the benefits. Of course, these are just my preferences, but we could have made a lot of different choices along the way. For example, instead of the Chase Sapphire Preferred, maybe the Ink Preferred could have been a better fit with its 3x travel category and cell phone protection benefit. Likewise, since I decided to go with a Chase setup, maybe the Chase World of Hyatt card would have been a better fit than the Hilton Honors Aspire card since Hyatt is a Chase transfer partner. The fact is, there are so many different credit card options to choose from and no one setup is going to be perfect, but I really enjoyed this thought-provoking exercise, so thanks Daniel for that awesome idea. And to take this even further, I've made another video consisting of a three-card setup that I think you're going to love because it's the best credit card setup that you've never heard of. So to learn more, check out this video next.